Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Enrique Garcia, and I'm a senior simulation specialist here at Go Engineer. In this video, we will introduce some basic setup aspects and tips essential for any simulation user who is new to the 3D Experience platform. These are the tips and concepts that most help me when starting to learn and work with the 3D Experience platform. These tips will be presented using the simulation native apps. However, the majority of the content can be applied to most of the native apps on the 3D Experience platform. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. When starting any new simulation project, one needs to obtain and import your design files to the 3D Experience platform. This can be done directly from within the native app you will be using or with a design with SOLIDWORKS app and the 3D Experience add-in in SOLIDWORKS, if you are a SOLIDWORKS user. Although the workflow for importing your design can be relatively easy and intuitive, if you are a new user, one must be aware of a new concept of file management on the platform called collaborative spaces. Collaborative spaces are the way we primarily manage and organize who has access to the files and content you're about to upload to the platform. When your platform administrator creates a collaborative space, they will assign which individual members or groups of members will have access to that space. If you're importing your design from a native app, be sure to specify the correct collaborative space that you and your team members will have access to. This will prevent any confusion as to where on the platform the design uploaded and why certain users cannot see or have access to the newly uploaded design. As shown on the screen in the native app, the current collaborative space is shown next to my me icon on the top right hand corner of the interface. The import option is nested under the new content icon which is called the add icon. Before clicking to import the design, you can change the collaborative space by clicking the drop down chevron and selecting the appropriate collaborative space. Once you select the desired collaborative space, review the credentials window, which is sort of like a confirmation window to ensure that we are selecting the correct options and click OK to confirm the change to the collaborative space. If you're importing your design to the platform using the Design with SOLIDWORKS app, Confirm that you are on the correct collaborative space at the top left portion of the top bar in the add-in. If you need to change the collaborative space, click on the drop-down chevron next to the collaborative space name and click the gear icon for the preferences menu. Under the credentials section, click the credentials drop-down menu and click the desired collaborative space. Click save. Once that is done, you may now do a save with options and import the model to the platform. Before we move on to my other tips and concepts, if you're importing a design to the platform for the very first time and you only show the common space collaborative space menu option or only have one option for a collaborative space, contact your platform administrator to verify how they want to begin to organize data on the platform. Your administrator will be able to easily create both groups and collaborative spaces using the user groups app and the 3D space app that can be added to their dashboard. Let's move on and show some tips next. When trying to manipulate your model in the graphics area for the very first time in any of your native apps, you may notice that the mouse controls here are a bit different than with your other software such as SOLIDWORKS. Luckily, this can be changed within the native app by selecting a different mouse control setting. This can be specified under the Preferences section of the app. With the native app window open, navigate to your profile picture, or what we call the Me icon on the top right section of the top bar, and click on your picture icon. Then click on the Preferences option from the drop-down menu. From the Preference Categories, ensure that we have the Profile category highlighted, and over to the right, click on the menu pull-down next to Choose Profile. Lastly, select your desired mouse control style. You can pick between Katia, SOLIDWORKS, and the native 3D Experience mouse control styles. There are numerous amounts of other options that can be specified here as well. Feel free to explore and experiment. You can always come back and click the reset button to revert back to the original settings. Click apply and then the OK button to close the preferences window. I've noticed that the update in the mouse control settings does not happen immediately. You will need to close and reopen the session of your native app for the changes to take effect. 
Now that we have a simulation native app open, let's talk about some of the things that can help you as you start to use the menus and interface as you set up your first analysis. The first thing I suggest doing is turning on the text for all the icons in the action bar. At the time of this recording, this option is off by default, but would be a great enhancement to have it on by default. To do this, simply right click on any of the icons in the action bar and select display icons and text. This will help you navigate and explore the different capabilities in your native app. Next, let's ensure that the assistant panel is activated. The assistant panel is a great way to get used to the different workflows that are required when running different analysis types. The assistant panel has selectable shortcuts to commonly use commands and keeps track of your analysis to make sure that it meets the requirements to run the simulation. To activate the assistant panel, navigate to the standard tab in the action bar and click the pullout menu on the second icon from right to left and select the assistant. The assistant panel should be visible. If it's not, the panel may be hidden. Click on the pullout chevron icon to the right edge of the graphics area to bring out the assistant. Once it's open, you can click the pin icon on the top left corner of the panel to permanently leave the assistant showing. Since we've been working with the action bar, let's introduce the last concept for this video, which is related to the action bar. Now, when I first started working with the native simulation apps, I was heavily dependent on the assistant panel for the navigation between the different commands. That's probably a testament to how great and intuitive the assistant panel really is. But truthfully, the action bar's organization eluded me for some time. I didn't quite understand how it was organized and how it behaved. So that being said, let me introduce to you the organization of the action bar. This will definitely help you out with its navigation and give you a better chance at guessing as to where the different commands are located without the assistant. First, let's introduce to you the standard tab on the far left of the action bar. The standard tab has a little blue earmark on its tab, indicating that it's pinned down to be permanently showing, no matter what other tab you click on. If you click on the standard tab, you will find that it's made up of six or sometimes seven major icons, depending on the native app that you're in. These icons are used to navigate between the different categories of the setup of the analysis, as well as the update icon, which is used to update the model to any changes in the geometry and metadata. Among these major icons, the ones I want to review with you in this video are the model, the model prep, and the scenario icons. When you click on any of these icons, we will see that the other tabs to the right of the standard tab will change as I click on these different icons. If I click on the model icon in the standard tab, I now have subsequent tabs that are used to set up initial conditions, properties of the model such as the material, and the mesh of the analysis. From an organizational standpoint, these are study conditions that directly impact the actual geometry of the model. If I click on the model prep icon, this category of commands is meant to help change or idealize your geometry and replace the original model geometry or aspects of your model with simpler representations such as treating a region as a thin feature, which can help with conserving your mesh resources or tools to help partition your geometry, such as when you're having trouble meshing your design. I will select one of these options here and click OK to show you the types of tabs that now show up. I will exit this set of commands now and click on the standard tab and temporarily unpin the tab. You can do this by right-clicking on the standard tab and selecting Pin Selection. This will remove the blue earmark on the tab, and as I click on other tabs or sections, we can see that my action bar is now noticeably shorter since the standard tab icons are no longer present. The only problem with unpinning the standard tab is if I need to access another set of tabs or different commands, such as to add a force load to my analysis, I would need to first go back to the standard tab, click on the new category of tabs such as the scenario icon, and now the tabs in the action bar have changed to the desired category of commands, and I can click on the Loads tab. The Scenario category of commands here represents features that are added to the study that are directly related to the setup of the specific study type, such as structural features for this particular example. This category of commands from the Scenario icon will act on the model when the analysis begins to run. These are commands such as Model Contact Interactions, different boundary conditions, or different force loads. 
we have found that for the most efficient way to navigate between the different types of commands in the action bar, it is best to go back and pin the standard tab in the action bar, as it was by default. So that's the last tip I wanted to present in this video. This has been Enrique Garcia with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website at goengineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.